this video, we'll be showing you how to set up and use Docmosis Java for the first time. We'll be doing it from the command line, but in other videos, we'll also show you how to do it with Eclipse and NetBeans. To get started, you should fill in this form to receive a Docmosis Java license key. You'll receive an email from us that allows us to confirm your email address. If you click on the Please Send Me the Key link, you'll receive a second email from us that contains the license key. Next, click on the Setting up Docmosis Java and you'll be taken to this page and you should proceed to download the latest version of the Docmosis Java zip from the Resources page. You'll find that zip file at the top of the Resources page and I downloaded that previously and have it sitting in C Docmosis Java on this machine. Let's just have a look at what's included in that zip file. You'll see there's the Docmosis jar, let's just extract that, and also the Javadoc licenses and some other files you may like to have a look through. If we go back to the resources page, you'll also find some code samples to help you get started, and we're going to have a look at the simple render producing your first document example. Let's download this file and add that into the same directory. If we open the zip file, you'll see it contains three files. Let's just extract those. Let's have a quick look at the template together. Firstly, you'll notice it's just a normal Microsoft Word document, but it's also a Docmosis template because it has these special placeholders that Docmosis will search for and replace with data. You'll also find the sample code and you'll find the readme file. Let's start with the readme file. Step 1 says we should receive a license key which we have and in the simple render.java code we should look for this line to add in our license key. Let's have a look for that Let's replace this part of the string with the key that we received. If we go back to the readme file, the second step, it says we should install a copy of OpenOffice or LibreOffice. On the Setting Up Docmosis page, you'll also find links to OpenOffice and LibreOffice. In this example, we'll be using LibreOffice because we've found that in recent years that's just moved ahead a little bit faster than OpenOffice. Once you've installed OpenOffice or LibreOffice, you'll find on Windows it will be sitting in a directory something like this, or perhaps on Linux, somewhere like this, and you should find that path and add it into your simple render.java code uh, here. Let's have a look at the code. And I've already got the code set up with the correct path because on this machine I've got LibreOffice 5 installed under C Program Files LibreOffice 5. So let's save those changes and try running the code for the first time. We need to make a directory to store the class in, compile the code and run the example. You'll see that Docmosis tells us firstly the version that it's using, some information around the Docmosis license key, and it'll tell you that it's created a file called newdocument.pdf. Let's have a look in the directory we're working from. So because the template and the code are in the same directory, this simple piece of code is using this template to create this document. You can see this is quite a rich PDF document with images, information in the headers, information in the footers such as page numbering, hyperlinks, and all of that information has been added from a very simple piece of code but been picked up by using the Docmosis template. We can see here the message that we saw previously in the Word document has been replaced with the data we're sending in from the code. Let's have a quick look again at the code. After we've set those properties that Docmosis is going to need, if we move down the page a bit, you can see that we create the configuration using those properties that we created. We create what's called a data provider builder. 
that allows us to add in the messages that we're going to send to Docmosis. These are simple key and value pairs. So Docmosis will look for this field in the template and replace it with this data. We initialize the Docmosis system. We tell Docmosis about the template that we'd like to use and the new file that we're going to create. And then this line here is the main line that does the render the document using the template we've set up, the output file, and the data that we've generated. Let's just try making some simple changes in here. By changing the message, and instead of creating a PDF document, Docmosis looks, in this case, at the extension of the file name that it's creating. Let's create a Word document. I'll just save those changes, recompile, and run the sample again. If we go back to our directory, we'll see that a file has been created. This time it's created a Microsoft Word document from the same piece of code, and the Word document has the new message that we changed in the code. Let's make one last change. This time we'll have a look at the welcome template. So by making changes in the template to the formatting of the message, then that will be applied to the data when it's injected into the template. We'll just save that change. And no need to recompile, we can just run the code and it'll pick up the change in the template and we'll see that new document now has the new font size, color and so forth. Hopefully that gives you a basis for exploring Docmosis and if you look through our other code samples give you some other ideas of how you can configure and use Docmosis. Thanks for watching.